We must, however, renew our mind and put off the old ways and put on some new ways. We've got to enter into the process of nurturing this nature so that we can take advantage of kingdom possibilities. It's a process. Hi, I'm Ron Hammonds and this is Life Shape Prayer and Discipleship. I want to thank you for joining with us today and as you add this block to your life, realize that God is building His kingdom in you and what you will hear today is very important to that process. I also want to encourage you to add an element of prayer to your life, specifically strategic prayer built around 2 Chronicles 7.14. 2 Chronicles 7.14 says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, will seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, God said. Then I will forgive their sins and then I will heal their lands. You know, God was serious when He said that, and He's serious about that today. This truth is being echoed around the nation and throughout the world. God is calling us to humble prayer and strategic discipleship. Set aside some dedicated time. Offer yourself to God. I know if we will, He will. God bless you. Thanks again for joining us here at LifeShape. Welcome tonight to our Life Shape Prayer and Discipleship. And this is brought to you by Golden Triangle Church on the Rock. That's my church. I love my church. We call it my church because that's what Jesus said. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. We want to be his church. And we say my church is a takeoff from that in Matthew, the 16th chapter in verse 18. Upon this rock, I will build my church so that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus took it personal. Uh, you know, we also need to take it personal. I trust that you are connected to a church. If you're not connected to a church and you can be, please, you know, make the effort to be connected to a church. More than just dating the girlfriend of Jesus, we should marry into the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the family of God in the earth. And uh, that's what God would have us do. He would have us committed to a local body. God says that he sets the solitary in families. I know when I start talking like this, I'm talking to someone specific. Why in the world would God put everybody else on hold all around the world and all those that would hear this have to endure listening to me just so that you could get a message? But God believes you are that important. Okay? He believes that. Uh, please do not let some disappointment in a church uh, move you to the place where you just uh, you know, uh, uh, no longer believe in churches or no longer value them. You know, uh, I, I tell people sometimes who, who, who say this to me, well, I was hurt. You know, a pastor hurt me. Let me just be honest uh, 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 with you. Uh, uh, I'll say uh, responsibly honest, okay, uh, but, uh, uh, but blatantly honest. You know, for, for every pastor that has hurt you, you know, that particular pastor most likely has had a hundred sheep hurt him. Okay? But we must keep going. Jesus was hurt in church. If you're going to be like Jesus, you're going to have to go to church. In this life and the life to come, Jesus went to church. Jesus was committed to church. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why I don't preach on church attendance as a habit is because you're generally talking to the wrong person. You know, because the people who are attending are there. And many times, many times I have heard messages on church attendance, you know, uh, just aimed at the wrong people. But, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, it's, it's, it's not a bully pulpit to somehow, you know, get someone in the headlock or make them feel condemned or, 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 or criticized or, or to, to, to uh, badger or to hammer on the people who are here. Uh, but I, I just feel in my spirit someone out there who is very important to God as you are. Someone out there has been hurt in a church situation, and, and for that, you have just decided that, you know, church is not something you want to participate in anymore. Let me tell you very quickly about uh, Jesus' experience. Jesus was raised in church. It's a church in Nazareth. It was a, a, a synagogue of his day in Nazareth. That's where he learned how to read. That's where he went to school. That's where his family participated. He was raised in that church. Some of you have gone. I've showed you that particular spot. It's in a, it's in a market in downtown Nazareth, in the old center of the 
city of Nazareth. Jesus was raised there. When Jesus was 30 years old, he, he was released by God and by the age and stage of his life into ministry. He was baptized in water. The Holy Spirit was the evidence, the voice from heaven speaking to him, uh, uh, identifying him as the Son of God. We've talked about that. He went out and was tempted in the wilderness. Then he returned 40 days later to Nazareth, to the city he was raised in, went into the synagogue where his family went and where all of his, of, 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 of his life he had been raised there. Uh, he, he stood up. He was, he was handed, because of his age and stage of life, he was handed uh, the, the, the Bible, and he was asked to read. He turned to a passage in Isaiah verse, uh, chapter 61, and he said this. He began to read. You can read it. Read the account. It's in Luke, the fourth chapter, beginning in verse 18. He said this. He stood up for to read. He opened to this place, and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, and recover your sight of the blind, to settle everything that are bruised and preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, the Bible says, and he said, this day the scripture's been fulfilled in your ears. And then he began to expound a little bit. And when the congregation and the leaders of the church felt as though that, that he was identifying himself with that messianic passage out of Isaiah, that he was making some claim that the spirit of God was on him, they rose up against him. They began to stop up their ears and they began to cry against him. He began to expound the word. They took him physically and drug him out of the church. They took him out to the edge of the hill at the edge of the city, which was a trash dump and was going to throw him over, basically, you know, killing him, throwing him out of the church and, uh, uh, um, um, you know, uh, the same thing as stoning him. You throw someone off of a cliff and you go down and chunk stones at him. And that's how they stoned people. Uh, uh, and, and the Bible says that he turned and walked right through them. They, they parted. They had no power to take his life at that time. And he went down just about 18 miles or so. He walked down to the Sea of Galilee, right through from Nazareth, down through Cana, a uh, little city of Cana, and on down uh, through uh, what is now near uh, uh, the, the, what's called Golani Junction, and went right on down to the city of Capernaum. And the Bible says the next Sabbath, he entered into the synagogue. He joined that synagogue. He again opened up the word and began to teach in that synagogue and heal and minister in that place. He again, as the Bible says, each Sabbath he was in the synagogue as was his custom. That means this, that Jesus had a habit. Even though he got kicked out of church, next Sunday he joined the church in the city he went to. He was kicked out of the city. You know, church is important. It was important to Jesus. The congregation of the family of God and the assembling together of the family of God is important. Jesus did not attend a church that was perfect. Okay? He didn't. You won't find one either. Uh, I... I, I uh, I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, and we have limited time, but let me tell you, listen to me, you are that important to God, okay? You are that important. Make sure that you are set in where God has set you, and if you don't find it the perfect place, then you pray, and you help it become a better place, okay? I've often heard, uh, you know, if you find the perfect church, don't join it because you'll mess it up, okay? And, uh, uh, of course, you know, that's not true about you guys, by the way. Thank you. Uh, you know, these are sitting here. It, it's, but God did this for you, okay? Uh, church is important. All right. Well, tonight, uh, we as the church... Again, we're, uh, we're in module number two, New Creation Realities tonight. And in our New Creation Realities, we have 12 lessons. We are in lesson number two, and tonight we are talking about the new nature. In 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, one of the scriptures we use to launch this new module, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, we read it last week, says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And verse 18 begins like this. And all things are of God. All things are of God. Let's, let's, let's hold right there for just a moment. That the Bible says that when a person gets born again, when a person makes a decision and comes into Christ, all things are of God. Imagine with me, uh, if you would, look back with me, if you would, and just imagine about when you were born, okay, if you can. When you were born, you were, you know, uh, uh, you, something happened. Everything changed. You were in one place, 
and when you got born, even though, you know, uh, physically you may not have changed much, and, and, and if we could have actually observed you and seen you before, you may not have changed much, but when you were born, you were all of a sudden born into a new environment. And, and actually, things did change. A lot of things changed uh, uh, with, without consideration to any of the legal or the political arguments about when life begins. Let me tell you, life exists in the womb, okay? That is the forever settled subject, and we understand that although life is very limited in the womb, it is, and, 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 and life in the womb is, is incredibly vulnerable in the womb, yet uh, life exists before we are born into this world. And when a child is born, things change. Position changes, perspective changes, potential changes. You know, limits expand. And, uh, and the things which were previously impossible are now possible. Uh, you know, uh, because you're no longer in mom, but you're in the world. Uh, uh, however, growth and development, in order for growth and development to occur, uh, you know, uh, we, we have to take some advantage. We have to be given some advantages. We have to be nurtured and nourished and then take some advantage of this new perspective, this new potential, this new place that we find ourselves you know, that's not unlike being born again. Not at all. Being born again is much like being born. Uh, there is a change that occurs. We were uh, of, of one sort. And if you could visibly observe yourself spiritually before you were born again and physically, you may not see uh, so much change afterward, but yet... You're born into a new environment, into a new place with new potential, a new perspective, and, 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 and you're actually uh, in, in a new position. And uh, limits have expanded, and, and, and new opportunities exist. And things which were not possible before are possible now because you are born again. You are not just in the world. Now you are in the kingdom of God. And it's, it's, it's a different perspective. It's a different potential. There's a different place, and, and uh, there, there are some new realities. And uh, things which were not, uh, as I said, possible before are now within your grasp as you grow and develop in Christ. When a person is born again, all things are new and all things are of God, including a brand new God-given nature. There's a new nature. Something has changed. In fact, everything has changed. A new nature. Our key scripture in 2 Peter Chapter 1, verse 4 says it this way. We have been given exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. A nature changes. Through Christ, we escape the corruption that is in this world. We're made partakers of that divine nature. All of a sudden, once, once we were, you know, one second before you were born again, you were a human being with a human nature. One second after you are born again, you are a human being with a divine nature. Something changed. A nature changed. You are a new creation in Christ. You become a brand new creature. A, a creature that God did not you know, uh, 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 create before in you. When you were born, you weren't this creature. Now you become a brand new creation. And this new creation has a new DNA, has a divine DNA. You are stamped with a DNA of God. All of a sudden, your potential expands. All of a sudden, your, 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 your potential uh, is, 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 is you know, a, a God potential. Before it was a human potential. Now it's a God potential. Before you would have gone the way of all mankind kind because you were born of man, but now you're born of God and you will go the way of every child of God. You have a new spiritual DNA. You have a, a new nature. All of a sudden, things will begin to feel different. Things will begin to seem different. You have potential, but that potential will not be realized without nurture and nourishment, without growth and development, without opportunities that are taken advantage of just because you are born again and everything changes does not mean that you will grow and develop to maturity it just means the potential exists 
It means that the great plan of God in the overall superintending general will of God is that when you are born again, you're stamped with a spiritual DNA and you receive a divine nature, a new nature. What do you get when you get born again? You, one of the things you get is you get a new nature. You get a God nature. Uh, life is a process, though. And ultimately, life re is a result of what we do with it. Life is, is a result of what we do with what we are given. And not everyone is given the same thing. Not everyone is given the same opportunity. You know, God is no respecter of persons, but that does not mean that he's going to make everybody, you know, uh, uh, you know of the same uh, 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 level of, of, of business acumen. You know, some people are good at math. Some people are good at English. Some people, you know, uh, seem to do well at this. Others, well, God is no respecter of persons. That means this, that, that he doesn't look at you and say, oh, you're smart, so I love you more. No. He's the one that gave us our IQ. He's the one that gave us uh, everything that we have. And life is ultimately the result of what we do with what God gives us. We are not responsible for things God did not give us, for the opportunities, for the potential that God did not give us. We cannot be responsible for that. Not all of us are going to, you know, uh, be prophets or evangelists. Not all of us are going to be great or even called at any one thing. But God has called everyone for something. And he has stamped every one of his children with his divine nature, with his spiritual DNA. Things change when you get born again. Everything changes. All things become new. And all things are of God when you are born again. Ephesians uh, tells us, you know, that basically, uh, you know, uh, in order to reach our God-given potential, by the way, we must properly nurture our new nature. Ephesians 4 says this, Put off concerning the former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust. Do you know you can be born again and keep your old man alive and nurture your old man and continue to grow more and more corrupt even though you're born again, even though you have a nature of God? You can become more and more like the world if you so choose to nurture the old man nature. But here we're told to put off. He's speaking here to born-again Christians. He's encouraging them to realize that they must properly nurture this new nature. That, that uh, you know, uh, it's, it's no different with a new life that comes through Christ than it is with any other thing. You know, what you feed will grow. Put off concerning your former conduct. Don't, don't keep acting like you used to act if you've been born again. Things have changed. You've changed. Don't keep following the old habits, the old conduct. Things have changed. You have a brand new chance, a brand new opportunity, great new potential, potential uh, and, and you need to have a new perspective on that. It, verse 23 says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That means this, that, that, that there's a process that you need to go through. You need to start changing your mind about some things. Verse 24, and that you put on the new man. It's a process that we put off that we renew and we put on the new man, which was created. You see, you're a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. Put on this new man, which was created according to God. All things are of God. This new man was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Old things pass away. Put the old things away then, and, and all things become new. Put on the new man then, because the new man is the one that's created in righteousness and true holiness. But it's a process we need to renew our mind to this new man nature. The new nature needs to be nourished. You cannot get born again and expect to be perfect or expect to, 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 to you know, know everything there is to know. When you get born again, just be because you got born again, you know, that seals your eternity. But there are some, also some things you need to do to take advantage of this new man nature. Okay? Uh, you need to nurture it. The born again life is a process. It's a process of cleaning up and cleaning out our lives. Okay? If we're going to nurture this new nature, we'll have to clean out, we'll have to clean up our lives so that we can reflect this new nature and so that we can take advantage of this new nature. Uh, it's a process, a process of putting off and putting on. 
Uh, that's what Colossians 3 says as well. Verse 9, it just encourages us to stop one thing. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Okay? Stop, stop living like the old man. And he just picks on lying here. Do not lie. Why? Because you have put off the old man and his conduct. What we just read. And have put on the new man. Who is renewed, how are we renewed? We are renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created us. We're supposed to come into his image. We're created in righteousness and true holiness. We have been given a divine nature once we are born again, but there's a process of putting off and putting on, of cleaning up and cleaning out, of stopping the old living, stop living the old life and start living the new so that we can reflect the image of God, so that we can actually take advantage of this potential we have in Christ. Because our limits have expanded. Our opportunities have increased. We are now in the kingdom. We are a new creation. We are a human being with a divine nature stamp. We are born again as a child of God. Just because you're born into this world does not guarantee that you will be successful. Just because you're born into this world does not guarantee you will be successful in this world. It does not guarantee you will be prominent in this world. Just because you are born into this world does not guarantee you will be wealthy. It does not guarantee you will be healthy. Being born into this world does not guarantee you're going to be happy. Being born again does not guarantee that you are going to be successful. Being born again into the kingdom of God does not guarantee that you're going to be healthy. It does not guarantee you're going to be wealthy. It does not guarantee you're going to be happy. It gives opportunity for you to take advantage of kingdom benefits. Okay? That's what we get when we get born again. We get a divine nature. And increased and expanded opportunities and increased potential. Things that were not before possible now are within our grasp. Because we are born into the kingdom and have a divine nature. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And God intends for us to reflect the image of him who created us. Because he created us in righteousness and true holiness. We must, however, renew our mind and put off the old ways and put on some new ways. We've got to enter into the process of nurturing this nature so that we can take advantage of kingdom possibilities. It's a process. As I said again, it's not guaranteed that we're going to be healthy or wealthy or prosperous or successful or or, 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 or happy. Being born again does not guarantee success. It guarantees opportunity and a divine nature with which we can take advantage of kingdom opportunities. Well, When we take this advantage from this perspective of having a new nature, this divine nature that God created in us according to his will, uh, things begin then to develop and change in our life. As we nurture ourselves, we begin to grow in the kingdom and begin to grow in grace and grow in God. You see, when you're born again, uh, you became this new creation. You received a new spirit when you got born again. You received a new heart. When you, got, you received new hope when you got born again. Uh, when, when you got born again, you received a new conviction. Beforehand, you may have felt bad about being bad, but now you do. You received a new spirit, a, a new heart, a new, things which you must increase and develop. You can deny that conviction long enough, and, and, and God will stop bothering you. But when you get born again, you get a new conviction. You get a new hope. You get a new heart. You get a new opportunity. You get this divine nature. Everything changes. A new destiny comes with being born again. You're not the same. When you are born again, everything changes, including a new nature. Let me read to you from Ephesians chapter 2. I'll read about eight verses here. So uh, listen closely and follow along in light of what we're talking about, this new nature. You see, we're talking about new creation realities. You are a new creation in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things pass away, all things become new, and all things are of God. Okay? We're talking about what do I get when I get born again? What changes? Everything changes. One thing you get when you get born again is you get in Christ. You come into Christ. You have a life in Christ. And it's in Christ that you are also given this new nature, the nature of God, so that now you begin, even without trying 
trying to. You began thinking like God thinks. You began to, 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 have, to have God thoughts and God desires. God begins, you know, he writes his laws in your heart and in your mind. You get new conviction. You get new hope, new heart. All things are possible. Things which were not possible are now possible because you're in a kingdom now, not just in a world, but you're born again, a new creature in Christ. Okay, Ephesians 2, verse number 3. We all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, and we were just like everyone else. Okay? We were by nature children of wrath. That was our nature at one time. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You see, you are sitting today in a heavenly place. If you are born again, you are raised up from eternal death and you are seated in Christ in a heavenly place. You're in, you're in a kingdom. You are seated in a kingdom. We, we, we cannot observe it with our natural eye. It is a spiritual reality, a, a, a new creation reality. So that in ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ. You remember? We're created in Christ. For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, in order to take advantage of our opportunities in this kingdom, in order to reach our potential in Christ, we must nurture this new nature we have been given by walking in good works. Good works do not save us. Good works do not make us righteous. Good works do not make us holy. However, good works do help us develop and reflect the divine nature that we possess in Christ. Good works. What are good works? The same thing the Apostle Paul began to enumerate in Colossians, the third chapter, and you can read it in many other places. You know, stop lying, stop cheating, stop stealing, stop your old man conduct and began to nurture the new man, renew your mind, and make some better decisions because you were created as a new creature in Christ in righteousness and true holiness, and you need to renew your mind so you can reflect the image of God and so you can take advantage of your kingdom potentials. And that's what he's talking about. Good works help us develop and reflect that divine nature. God has before ordained that we should walk. Those of us who are born again should reflect his nature and walk in good works. We should stop living like the old man, like a child of wrath. That's not our nature anymore. We should start living the divine nature as a child of God. Learning to live uh, the new creation life is a process. Okay? Let me give you our important points tonight as, as I close. Number one, salvation changes everything, okay? That's a fact. Salvation changes everything. When people say, what do I get when I get born again? They tell them, you get everything God has. You have potential, opportunity, access, but it'll take some work. Number two, we receive a new nature in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation you have a new nature as well. You are no longer uh, by nature a child of wrath. You are by nature a child of God, a new nature. You will start feeling different. You'll start thinking different. You'll start wanting things different. Go with it. Flow with it. Allow that innate desire in that nature to guide you. Take off and put on. Number three, our new nature grants us spiritual, a spiritual predisposition towards godliness. Uh, when you get born again, you are endowed with a spiritual predisposition towards godliness. When you are, are, are carnal, when you're not born again, you have a spiritual predisposition towards ungodliness. We receive a new nature when we get born again and a spiritual predisposition towards godliness. And number four, 
The new nature is nurtured through our godly choices. Okay. Our new nature is nurtured through making godly choices.